Usually at this time of year, I've gathered together a list of my favorite Christmas cocktails served in bars throughout London. Hopping from bar to bar to try their cinnamony, gingery, gingerbready concoctions is always my late November treat. Alas, as we are all very well aware, this year is unlike any other. But that hasn't stopped me. I'm Susan Schwartz, your drinking companion, and this is Lush Life Podcast. Every week we are inspired to live life one cocktail at a time. Hotels, restaurants, and bars have been shut for four weeks, and they are due to open tomorrow, at least in London. Still, Christmas cocktail creation is happening all over the country. On today's show, I'll be joined by my friend and former Lush Lifer, Benoit Provo, and Salvatore Menya of the American Bar at the Stafford here in London, and also Johnny Stuckbury and Harry Morris from the bar at Northcote up in Lancashire as they reveal what Christmas flavors they are drawn to, what's on their cocktail menu this year, and their top tips for the home bartender. Also, check out my favorite Christmas spirits, cocktail books, and gifts for this year at alushlifemanual.com. Hang on till the end to discover what American whiskey I found when I opened the first door of my boozy advent calendar. Okay? We're starting off at the Stafford. Well, it's so nice to have you both with me today. Could you just introduce yourself and tell everyone where you're from and what you do? My name is Is Benoit. I mean, we've had a chance to to speak before Suzanne, so we've known each other for quite some time. I'm actually the director of the American Bar at the Stafford Hotel and been involved with the bar for 27 years. This is Salvatore, my um, head barman. Hello, my name is Salvatore. I'm from Italy. I'm working in this family for at least three years. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really proud for what we're doing and how we serve our guests. So I'm the head bartender of the American Bar. Can you tell me a little bit about this famous American Bar of which you speak? So for for the one who never had a chance to visit uh, visit the bar, we're quite Unusual in the fact that uh, the bar is full of memorabilia. Basically, it's full of donations from our guests over more than 60 years. So you will find burgies, American football helmet, ties, caps, and uh, absolutely everything we've got, and lots of pictures as well from our from our patrons. Some famous, some not so famous, but uh, they're all part of the big family that the American bar is. So we've got lots and lots of memories hanging on the ceilings and hanging on the walls of the bar. So since you brought up memories and we're talking about Christmas here and holiday cocktails, do you have any special Christmas memories or things that you do every year, you know, in a normal year at the Stafford and at the American Bar? Well, our tradition is our famous mulled wine, which is, which is cooked on a daily basis on, the, on top of the counter. I always say, even if uh, you're not especially fan of the, um, of the mulled wine, just to get the smell and all the fumes and all the spices just brings brings the Christmas atmosphere and Christmas spirits alive. And and every year people ask me, when are you starting to do the mulled wine? I want to bring others because they brought their mom or they brought friends, family, and they, they ask, when are you starting your, your mulled wine? So it's become the, the traditions and we just want to keep the to keep the tradition alive. And Salvatore, how long did you have to work there before he told you the secret recipe? To be honest with you, I really don't know yet exactly the recipe because Benoit is really, really keen on it. And he doesn't like to share a lot with me about the Muller wine. Everything's I got try, a price. I try. Got a price, Salvatore. I know that. I know <laughs> that we are trying to, to, we are trying to find a price for the secret. I love that. That's so funny. That's <laughs> funny. Now, now, you're both, Benoit, you're from France and Salvatore, you're Italian. When you start thinking about Christmas cocktails, what flavors or what what things come to mind to you specifically that, you know, that you bring from your, your heritage? To be honest with you, I think the Christmas flavor, I when I'm thinking about the Christmas, I'm always thinking about the cinnamon flavor, ginger, all the winter spices. So as an example, one of the drinks we, we're going to introduce um, is made with um, the gingerbread, which I think is the really 
And let's say the really example of Christmas as a flavor, all the winter spice you're going to find inside. So what do you think, Ben? That, and, and we've got another one, obviously, champagne. It's uh, one of the... One of the ingredients on, a, on one of the three cocktails that we're going to introduce to you, because festivities, obviously, champagne is always, is always around. So yes, champagne and, and then spice, I think you've got the essence of a, of a good Christmas drink, to be honest. You know, it kind of makes me giggle. Of course, the Frenchman would say a wine. And the Italian would say something to eat. Not that we're generalizing here. But <laughs> and a wine. <laughs> so what are the cocktails? Can you tell us? Yes, of course. I'm going to start there we go. with the first okay. one, and I'm going to give you the chance, but not to introduce the second one. Are you okay with this? Oh, you introduced you introduce the cocktail because you've been the, <laughs> you, you've been working on the recipe. I've been helping you with the names. And uh, will you, if you've got any questions, uh, please feel free to, to stop us at any time. Susan. And I think of in our bodies, that one, we always work together. There is no star, no nothing. The atmosphere that is behind the bar. And the bar is a, is something I, I didn't find in other places. For this, I'm really proud to work with 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 this atmosphere with the banner as well. I'm really happy about that. So, the first cocktail we gonna we that I'm gonna introduce is called Candy Candy, and it's based on Plymouth Gin with the floral notes given by the Saint Germain. I balance the flavor with the sweetness of a Lille Blanc. After we got the sassy cider rosé reduction with the prinkly pear and pomelo to add some notes of the bitterness to the drink. To finish the drink, of course, we're going to have the champagne, the top up with the champagne. And uh, this cocktail is inspired, of course, in, for the Christmas time. So we decided to decorate the, the, the glassware with the white and the red edible pint around the glassware. It's going to make this a really... Hence why we call it candy cane, to remember of the, of the candy cane. So it's it's very easy drinking cocktail, kind of a bittersweet, very refreshing with, with the champagne. So that's a champagne you can drink uh, at any time, pray after dinner or any time during the day, to be honest. Now tell me about the gingerbread one. The gingerbread one, so... Is my favorite drink because I love this kind of flavor. So what we decide to use, we decide to do an old fashion style. So we had this kind of a special rum, the spicy rum named Bayou. So with three different kinds of vanilla inside. So what do we did? We did we did the fat washing with the gingerbread. But we decided to do homemade the gingerbread because as you know, a lot of gingerbread in the market right now are made with uh, with oil. So to do the fat washing, you need to have a, a really fat part. So we do, we do homemade uh, gingerbread. And with this kind of fat wash, it's going to come up all the winter spices as uh, ginger, cinnamon, orange, cloves. And combined with rum, the te- make just an incredible and unique cocktail for the Christmas. And I hope you're going to come really soon to try our cocktail. Oh gosh, that that last one just sounds so good. And I'm sure that there'll be some kind of delicious gingerbread, real gingerbread to go with that because hopefully, hopefully it will be it will be ready. So that's one we named it the the Carolers treat, as I'm sure you're aware, that in New Orleans they've got this caroling in Jackson Square where all the, the carolers are meeting with the with the candles. So we call it the Carolers treat. So once you finish singing all the Christmas carols, you can have a nice, a nice drink to to warm you up. And uh, the reference to New Orleans is because Bayou rum, the, the rum we're using is made in uh, Louisiana. So hence, hence why we picked up the name. Oh gosh! Well, both of those sound absolutely divine. I can't wait to be there again. When when do you open? Hopefully on the uh, second of December. As as you know, we're all keeping our finger crossed because we're getting a little bit bored at home. The good things that give us time to to develop this recipe. I mean, Salvatore has done a um, fantastic job, but uh, yeah, I think we, we we just can't wait to uh, to go back and and welcome you all to try all our Christmas treats, and and we'll be we'll be more than happy. I don't know if I'm ready to see you anymore every single day, so I need to think about that. You can you can you can do it. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being on the show. And, you know, the Stafford holds a special place in my heart. And I can't wait to see you guys and to toast to 
hopefully a better new year than this one has been. Let's, let's hope so. And you know, you're always going to be welcome, Suzanne. And uh, I mean, for the rest of, of you, if you haven't had a chance to experience the, the American bar at the Stafford, I mean, feel free. Come and join us for a nice glass of Merlot wine, especially on a cold winter night. <laughs> it all goes down very well. And obviously to try one of our cocktails. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Thank yes, you. we'll see you there. Of course, they couldn't leave without a few tips for the home bartender. But first, as I always say, people shouldn't be scared of experimenting. So the key thing is in kitchen is to have good ingredients. And to me, that's, that's the key. Use good ingredients because if you start with bad ingredients, you will never get a good result, like in, uh, like in cooking. And then really, it's, uh, we've all got our own test buds. We all react and we've all got our special favorite spirits. It's, it's really a matter of experiencing. You can use the, a classic cocktail and then add a little twist and, uh, to make it more Christmassy. Yeah, could be um, edible gold you can add to your cocktail. There's lots, lots of things that, uh, that you, can, you can try and, uh, and experiment. To me, that's the key. Don't be scared. If you, if you don't succeed the first time, you can adjust your recipe and just, uh, just make, make it safe, festive and, and have fun because, I mean, cocktail making should be a fun experience to try at home. Yeah, I totally agree with you. So, I mean, I think the best thing you can do is to remove all the wall because for do something great, you need to do a lot of mistakes. So this is my idea. When I tried the first time I tried to make the, the infusion, the fat wash with the gingerbread, I did the for three, four time mistake because it was the, my first time with this kind of thing. I think the best thing you can do is really to try to remove all the wall and to make something great. So there is no one going to judge you. If you think it's great for your test, for your palate, it's going to work. You need to just be yourself. Now it's time to head up north with Johnny and Harry. Hello, y'all. I have your winter Negroni that I'm starting off with today, just to bring us into the Christmas spirit. All right, so cheers to you both. Cheers. Mm. I want to hear all about both of you, North Coat, and Christmas cocktails, because we're here to start off the season with some Christmas cocktails. So, Harry, Johnny, we have to have a little bit about your history. Who wants to go first? Why don't you introduce yourselves first? Okay, sweet. So, uh, I'm Johnny. I've been at Northco now for six and a half years. I basically grew up here. <laughs> it's, oh, the wow. best way. it's the best way to describe it. I started on the bar probably five years ago now. Started as a, started as an apprentice, first of all, when I was 18 years old. Sort of progressed my way through uh, now, obviously, running the bar between myself and Harry, spent many Christmases here and made many Christmas cocktails and many, 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 many winter Negronis as well. Did you always want to be in the bar world or hospitality world? Is that why you got right into it? Well, I was, I was originally at college when I was 17 doing mechanical engineering, so it's a bit of a swap. But it was it just I was working part time in hospitality and I just decided that I enjoyed it a lot more than I was enjoying college. So I uh, decided full time worked for me. And uh, yeah, here we are now. <laughs> All right, Harry. So my history is a little bit shorter here. I've been here for about uh, 18 months, give or take COVID, because we've <laughs> uh, been sat home for four months. <laughs> um, but yeah, my, my bartending history is, uh, stretches back probably the, the same time, but I always, I've always i always worked like part-time. I, I started as a waiter, and then when I was old enough, got onto the bar. I moved down to London, uh, and then worked in an office nine to five, and then started doing like moonlighting like one night a week in a couple of bars. I need to know Tommy. And then eventually I left the country, did a bit of traveling, and then came back and just decided that I wanted to give it a go full-time. So this is where I'm based. Found, found Northcote, they gave me a job on the bar, and yeah, been doing this ever since. Yeah. Now, now, because I'm an American, and even though I've lived here for years and years and years, I can't tell accents. Are you both Northerners? Yeah, yeah my, my accent's like, so when you when you move regions in the UK, so I moved down south, you just get the, you just get like the, the Mickey taken out oh, of you all God. the time. So <laughs> my accent's like, it went a bit southern, and then now I've come back up, so it's kind of like, Back to Not that you're Lancashire, Blackburn, yeah. like it's full northern. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Lancashire, like 10 minutes down the road. All right, and Johnny? I grew, I grew up in uh, St. Anne's, which is just a little town. Oh, no, it's not Blackpool. <laughs> it's right. not Blackpool, okay? It's not Blackpool. <laughs> Who wants to tell me a little bit about, about where you are and where you've landed, this gorgeous property, Northcote? 
Well, <clears throat> as the as the resident sort of, I'm going to be here for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's a stunning place. We're sort of set. We're not too far out of the town centre of Blackburn, but we're just just far enough, if you will, into the uh, into the countryside. I mean, we're just looking out the window here. The the, the views are just absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's about ten miles. Literally, yeah. just clear trees and fields and happiness everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's the the place has come up come on a lot. In sort of past years, it's developed a lot. There's uh, been quite a few changes. You know, when I started, they just finished an original refurb, which was you know rebuilding the restaurant. The room we're sat in right now was actually part of the car park. So it, a lot's changed, and a lot's you know continuing to change with the time, sort of thing. It's really good to see. And it's getting cold now, so we've got the fires on, yeah, and the Christmas oh, menus yeah. out, and it's like. It's nice. It's, it's the nice best time, time of the year. year. It's, it's nice. the best time of the year. You know, everyone's all nice and cosy and well, cosy with social distancing, of course, but cosy still. And it's just, it's just the best time of the year. You, know? okay. you guys are being very British here and very shy. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the most beautiful properties in England. It has a Michelin star chef. I'm sure work with restaurant and all of that to create things, you know. So how how has that been? How how long has it been Michelin star? I think it's 23 because it's 23 I'm, I'm a year older than the Michelin star here. It's it's ridiculous. It's, yeah. So initially Nigel Howard had it for most of 16 it. years, <laughs> and then Lisa's taken over as executive chef and then carried on the, the Michelin star. But we had an inspector in the other day. So we're just like <laughs> All right, we're crossing. Our <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, with like cocktails, Lisa's really good actually. Yeah, both me and Johnny, we work with her on occasion. We had a the apple pie cocktail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we go to her and have a look at flavors and see what to get her perspective and see what she thinks would would work. Yeah, we often um, try and sort of whatever dessert she's putting out, we try and incorporate something along those lines, so that then so you, you know you're in the. You're in the bar, you get a taste for it, then you get to get into the restaurant and then you've suddenly got it, the physical thing. So we try and work around that. Was it, was it the end of last year? Was it Christmas last it year? Yeah. So we did like a we did like an apple crumble cocktail. So it would, you know, a bit different to like an apple pie that you might find in, in other bars, whatever. So we had, you know, we used the custard that the pastry chefs were using for so for the dessert basically. We used that custard, made a foam from it and it so oh. you basically just steal the work of <laughs> just steal everyone else's <laughs> and put it in a steal all the prep and put it in. <laughs> you know it's funny i've interviewed bar staff in michelin star restaurants or restaurants that never work with the uh, kitchen and then some that always do it just is oh, yeah. i have a th- i just think that it just makes sense because oh yeah well, we're all playing with flavors we're all making yeah, exactly. trying to make to create things. those wonderful cocktails like yeah. that apple crumble one that i so want to taste right now <laughs> we're talking about christmas this year and the cocktails that you're creating this year and so so when do you start thinking about it how do you start i want to hear everything Okay, so, I mean, for, for me personally, anyway, uh, when I'm thinking of Christmas cocktails, what I, I try and use my memory for it in terms of when I was younger, what I used to think of for Christmas and stuff like that. And for me, the thing that comes straight away is my <laughs> at my grandma's house, she always used to have Christmas potpourri, and it always used to smell of, like, cinnamon and spices and, it, like, ginger and all sorts. And I, just, I can't forget this smell, if, if that makes sense. You know, you just... It, and it always reminds me of Christmas. So I try and incorporate that into drinks. So in a lot, as Harry will tell you, if I make a cocktail, it's probably got ginger in it. <laughs> Everything has ginger. Everything's got ginger in it. So uh, it's always Christmas cocktails at North Coast, yeah. no matter what time yeah, of year. Yeah, yeah. All year round, there's always ginger. <laughs> All year round, Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> got ginger, ginger ale, some form of ginger. And I have like sort of Christmassy spices. So you've got like, you know, star and east, there's uh, cinnamon, cloves, nutmeg, stuff like that is going into a lot of the drinks. Just because... Like I said, Grandma's potpourri. I just can't. And how about you, Harry? Yeah, I'm. I'm a kind of like I'm. I like trying to make things look a bit funky and a bit weird. Like last year, we we didn't we didn't we didn't carry on with it. But there's an idea that I, had, <laughs> I really wanted to make like a really a really thick foam on top of a, a red cocktail and make it look like a Santa hat. Oh, I love and that. I was, I was shaking this this foam for about five minutes <laughs> to get so... it to get it really like a meringue, <laughs> and then I put it on. And we're like, yeah, that's really good. But if you have to make 50 of those in 10 minutes, you'll be there for half. Right. Three hours nah. later, it's yeah. big enough to make a Santa hat. Yeah. It was great for the pictures. We've got a blowtorch. Oh, and, like, and like, 
Um, and unfortunately, the top of it, it looked great, but <laughs> yeah, not for practical. A, so for a 60 yeah, corner service, it's like. Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> so, how many Christmas cocktails do you, are you making for this new menu? We have. We, we normally tend to go with like five or six on a seasonal menu. So we have. We normally change. Lisa changes the menu every ten weeks. So when the Christmas season comes in, we will. We would change our our cocktails to match that to fit those 10 weeks. So we'll look at what she's doing, figure out what the seasonal ingredients are, and then just try and build four or five. It doesn't really matter, but it's if if we've got four solid ideas, then brilliant. If we've got six, then fantastic. Exactly. So it depends what we think of. Yeah, we're just trying to, we're, we're working it, we're working seasonally in essence. You know, we're doing it very much in tune with what, what she's got going on. Um, yeah. And is there one that's been super successful through the years that, you know, people come back and say, I've got to have that one. Yeah. So your Kings and Ginger. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it, I mean, it's, it's going to be on our Christmas menu as well. It's got ginger in it. Believe it or not. <laughs> I heard that word ginger. <laughs> it's going to be a theme all the way. Well, t- tell me about the Kings and country. Yeah. So the idea came to me a couple of years ago. And I was awarded a uh, bartender of the month by Kings Ginger uh, for this cocktail so uh, I was using sort of seasonal ingredients at the time and sort of thought we'd bring it back uh, so it's a combination of King's Ginger um, as well as marmalade vodka from Chase there's some peach peach puree a elderflower cordial lemon juice and then we just top it up with a little bit of Mediterranean tonic fever tree and it's, it's really really good it's it, it's a combination of like it's refreshing. It's got a little spicy note to it. It's got bitterness. It's got it's got all the layers basically. Not to blow my own trumpet, of course, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but it but it flies out. It really does fly out. And and what is so what is, so that one's going to be on because of memories and ginger. And how about well, you have the ginger Negroni, which I've made. Why don't you tell me about that one and a few of the others? The you always have a champagne cocktail. Now there's a nutcracker. So well, the champ- well the champagne cocktail is a is an absolute classic, and we'd get shot if we didn't put that on the menu. Actually, hundred percent um, shot. It's it's, Miss, it's Miss, so Mr. Bancroft, who is our managing director, is his like family twist on the on the traditional recipe. So it's Quantro Quantro brandy, Angostura bitters, and a sugar cube at the, at the bottom. Swirl it all around, and then top it up with champagne and an orange twist on the top. It's and it is stunning. It is fantastic. It is absolutely stunning. Yeah. Um, Unchanged for centuries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say he's that old. So yeah. <laughs> I hope he You've also twisted your Negroni to make it winterized. Yeah, yeah exactly. So the, the vermouth that we use, we, we use Lustal vermouth because for, for us especially, you know, a good Negroni starts with a good um, yeah. vermouth. Really. So we use Lustal vermouth, which is incredible. We then infuse that with winter spices. So we take like a, a vat pack, like pretty big one, full bottle of vermouth and infuse that with star anise, cinnamon and a couple of cloves into a water bath for a couple of hours and it just brings out the best infusion. And, you know, just your standard recipe after that, we, we'll go a little heavy on vermouth, but then just, oh, um, just stick a cinnamon stick in the top and set fire to it. Bliss. Oh, I love, I love <laughs> setting fire to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just because it gets, gets your senses going, doesn't it? You know, every, uh, all your tastes, Start with all your different senses and smell, sight, you know, your two biggest ones to get your palate going. So you can see that it's got cinnamon in it and then you see cinnamon on fire and then you smell it. And it, yeah, fire's an easy win on a bar. Fire, is an easy, everyone wants fire. Like, everyone is that thing that's I, on fire. That. I, I have a feeling that's going to be your top tip for the home bartender, but we'll hold off on that. Set fire to it. Fire. Fire. And the nutcracker, that's going to be on your menu as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, Nutcracker, you know, it's it's a big thing at Christmas, isn't it? You know, the, the Nutcracker musicals and all sorts. Uh, but in essence, it's amaretto with apple juice, lemon, and a little bit of this panda pieces, which is ginger. <laughs> it's like a, a lovely Christmas in a bottle. Yeah, it's like, it, it basically is a, an alcoholic Christmas liqueur. It's brilliant. And it's yeah, so we we use that with the with the amaretto and it's just a really light it's still light and refreshing, but it's got all the sort of general flavours you expect from Christmas and like a little bit of apple juice in there as well. And it just yeah. it's just scrummy. And we have a we have a really good amaretto. We have so a really, really, really good velvety amaretto. and thick and sweet. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's proper amaretto. It's seen in almond before, hasn't yeah. it? <laughs> These just sound divine. And I know you've given me recipes, uh, which I'll share, and we're going to try them. But it, what was 
interesting that you said is that, you know, your cocktails come out of memories and this is going to be a hard Christmas for a lot of people. And we have to, you know, by sipping one of your cocktails, if that brings back a Christmas memory, you know, it's a gift in itself. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, you know, it's still going to create memories for people. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely paramount. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, no, it's, it, people are going to create memories in different ways now, aren't they? Um, it's just, we've got to move with the times, all of us, haven't we? Mm. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've switched up. Like, a lot has changed in the way that we work. Yeah, I mean the, the masks are the least of it, but it, you know we just keep tra- we keep changing, and as long as we can stay open and carry on doing what we're doing, that's that's good for us. That's all, you know. That's and all so far, you're, you're going to be open and ready for business throughout Christmas and New Year. Yeah, we're yeah. Fully <laughs> we are. We are. It, we're we're pretty lucky. Like the customers here are quite. There's a lot of loyalty associated with the place, and a lot of people have been coming for for decades. So. People want to want to, especially at Christmas. Everyone loves it around Christmas, so we get all the regulars in. You see all the have, like it's not nice. all the it's nice just faces. Really, like it there's is. No, there's nice no way of describing it, other way, other than it's just really nice to yeah. see everybody. And I'm sure a little snow just makes it even more beautiful. <laughs> We're just like in the in the in the bit of the north that just gets rain. Oh, it's just, no, it's, no, rain. No. it's raining now. Like yeah, it's raining now. <laughs> We're trying to set the scene here. Be romantic. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. Yeah, snow, yeah, no, it snows all it's the snow, time. It's yeah, yeah, it's snowing, yeah. <laughs> but to be fair, we did get it sometimes. We we actually got snowed in one year, which is brilliant. Yeah. But yeah, all, all all huddled around. It was about three years ago, four years ago. We're all huddled around the fire because like the everywhere was just snowed in. No one could get the car off the car park. So just had everyone, everybody in the lounge is dishing out, you know, uh, mulled wine and cups of tea and stuff, and very British, of course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And, and all huddling around the fire, and it was just really nice. <laughs> so, could you all give me some top tips for the home bartender? Absolutely. So, I mean, as as we mentioned earlier, fire and ginger. <laughs> and so, for me, I love the orange as a flavour. I think orange is brilliant when you're topping off your martinis or your old fashions, Negronis especially. Can't have a Negroni without an orange. Can't have a Negroni without an orange pill, exactly. So, for me, the biggest thing is. Flaming orange peel, I think it's brilliant. So basically the oils inside orange peel are really, really flammable. And when I found out how to do this trick, I went and bought a bag of oranges and just spent hours doing it. And that's, not, that's not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so basically if you take a lighter and hold it, just just almost touching the peel. So once you've, you know, you've, you've cut a nice bit of peel, cut off all the pith from the inside, all the bitterness, and then just hold a lighter towards it. So when, when you've got your finished Negroni, you've finished old fashioned, you just hold hold the lighter to it. Give it about five to six seconds. You'll start to see it flicker, and then just squeeze the orange peel between your fingers. That'll spray out all the oils. That releases all the oils, and then it goes through the, the flame and just makes a big poof, a big sort of puff of uh, puff of fire, a little fireball. And it just looks brilliant. It might set your smoke alarm off, but it looks brilliant, and it just smells. Utterly incredible, yeah. especially at Christmas as well. I mean, you know, we, we're making that many drinks on the bar that we're using that for that the entire bar smells of orange and it's brilliant. Well, that's that'd be my number one tip there. I think for me, like when you stuck at home, we were trying to do cocktails when we're when we're when we're back there, and it's like you find a recipe and you're like, oh, I've not got this, but don't worry, like just see what you've got and just use anything. You can mix and match, like for, oh, for like a like a cosmopolitan, if you've not got lemon juice, use lime juice. If you've not got Cointreau, use something else that's citrusy. Use a bit of orange juice. juice. Just, <laughs> just like dabble and try. Like there's, there's nothing that you can't do. You just recreate flavors, and you'll have fun doing it. And if you know, if you have a look in the back of your mum's cupboard or something like that, you'll probably find a bottle or something. Yeah. You know, everyone's, so everyone's got a bottle of Cointreau. Everyone's got a bottle of Cointreau, and everyone's got a martini <laughs> to dry somewhere. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you guys for being on the show and for being here with me and starting off the season right. We are going to create our own memories this year. And thank goodness we have a few of your cocktails to start it off with. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks so much to Benoit, Salvatore, Johnny and Harry for including us in their Christmas celebrations. All of those cocktails sounded amazing so it was hard to pick just one for our Cocktail of the Week. In my opinion, peppermint sticks just scream Christmas is here. So our Cocktail of the Week had to be the candy cane. 
you'll need to make a sassy cider reduction before beginning, and it's good for about 10 candy cane cocktails. Just add 200 mils of sassy cider, 30 grams of sugar, one prickly pear, and one large slice of pomelo to a pot. Bring it to a boil and then simmer for about 20 minutes. And then add a splash of lime juice at the end. Leave the reduction to cool down before grabbing a cocktail shaker. Fill the shaker with ice and then add 35 mils of Plymouth Gin, 10 mils of Lille Blanc, 5 mils of Saint-Germain liqueur, and 15 mils of that gorgeous sassy cider reduction you just made. Shake, 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 and then strain into a flute glass. Top it up with champagne, and then toast to the season ahead. You'll find this recipe, plus more holiday cocktails and all the cocktails of the week at alushlifemanual.com, where you'll find all the ingredients in our shop. This morning, I opened door one of my Drinks by the Dram bourbon and American whiskey advent calendar, which, by the way, you can find a link to on alushlifemanual.com if you don't have one already, to find Whistlepig 10-year-old straight rye whiskey. I googled Whistlepig and how crazy that it should be outside of Middlebury, Vermont, a place very dear to my heart. I spent a summer there learning to speak Italian and made a few of the best friends I have in my life. Now, Whistlepig really means something to me. If you live for Lush Life, make sure you're giving back to the bars you love by heading to one and have a few Christmas cocktails or taking part in cocktail delivery where you live. The music for Lush Life is by Stephen Shapiro and used with permission. And Lush Life is always and will be forever produced by Evo Terra and Simpler Media Productions. Which leaves me to say the wise words of Oscar Wilde, All things in moderation, including moderation. And always drink responsibly and wash your hands and wear a mask. Next week, we're meeting with someone who opened a bar during lockdown, and it has become my local. Until that time, bottoms up.